Hi everyone, welcome to this reading, welcome to this um, Mercury retrograde period. <laughs> um, so it's a really strong one and first of all, I initially wanted to do a video on the plant medicine that I was talking about last reading and I haven't been able to get it together and do, the, do that yet, but it will happen when it's supposed to happen. Um, so what I'm going to do now is do a reading on the Mercury retrograde energy and some of the other energies that are here with the tarot. So first of all, Mercury, we have the Two of Pentacles, the Ace of Pentacles, and if you can hear my son in the background, um, I apologize for that, but he is um, happily talking to his friends. So um, we have the King of Swords, the Ace of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles with this Mercury. So Mercury, the messenger of the gods, is in a, in a, um, sorry, in an energy um, relationship, which is called a aspect, with Pluto. Um, <clears throat> it is in a challenging relationship with Pluto, Pluto and Capricorn. So something, um, an opportunity to change something. But how? How do we change something with this, with this energy? And first of all, what about Capricorn? What's Capricorn about? If you have noticed, if you go towards anything that has Capricorn energy, and Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, you go towards anything that has Capricorn energy, whether it's a person, an institution, a company, whatever it is, with a negative attitude, with a negative kind of mindset, there's always going to be, in my experience, some kind of resistance or a blockage, because that is the nature of Saturn. And what I've found is to have a more positive um, frequency, a higher frequency when approaching something that is Saturnian is like, it's like night and day because what happens is, is the door is opened. It's basically like if you imagine some grumpy old man who is looking at your expression, your dedication, your <clears throat> willingness to do the work and all of this stuff. He is like analyzing whether you're going to have access based on how you approach it. So that may be like a silly example, but that's my experience <clears throat> with Saturn energy. So Capricorn is like things can sit for a really, really long time without anything changing at all. And then when there's a planet like Pluto in it, As we know, with that we've been seeing that things change with Pluto. And what changes? The structure of our bodies, the structure of our physical existence, our lives. Um, <clears throat> things are totally changed. And so with this challenging aspect with Mercury, it's saying, what can we gain from reflecting and even deeper than that, going into a subconscious um, garden, and this involves Venus, which I'll bring in in a minute, because she is sextile with that, with that energy as well. Um, the the ability and the skill to basically have um, access to a subconscious garden. As I said in my last reading, to 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 see things about ourselves and about the world um, that need changing. So <clears throat> we have this opportunity with this um, Mercury retrograde to to do all this, and it will be until October. So it's a it's a really amazing opportunity to get into a ritual of giving yourself better sleep and more access to 
to that subconscious world and um it's really showing that in the chart like um we have venus in scorpio trine with with neptune neptune in pisces so this really kind of mystical uh, otherworldly kind of energy of neptune and before i go on if you have a lot of water in your chart you've got the upper hand during this whole um thing that's going on with everything changing because to have a lot of water means you can adapt very easily to situations and you can also travel through different kinds of dimensions and the ability to use your intuition not that intuition is about water but it's the ability to go with what's going on go with the flow and and really find the meaning in it so venus in scorpio she's she's really in a meaningful kind of spot and try and with Neptune in Pisces, she may be looking at things that are un unreachable in any other way other than going into the subconscious um, garden. Someone said to me once that they thought that triggering people was a good thing because when people are triggered, um, then they grow, which is, it's not, you know, that's not a, a lie. They do grow, but isn't it better to be able to grow in a less volatile way, in a way that doesn't age you or, you know, doesn't um, make you feel like you are going to, you know, give up on life? Some people cannot cannot um, be triggered for long periods of time without basically doing something drastic, like turning to drugs and alcohol or even worse than that. So Two of Pentacles, The Fool, Four of Pentacles. This is very Uranus energy, the full with the Earth sign, the Earth energy, four of pentacles, Taurus, um, some sort of like really resistant to change kind of energy um, with the two of pentacles. And then we have the queen of pentacles, page of pentacles, two of cups. the four of swords the death card and the king of pentacles so this is immediately i'm thinking this is um the ref reflecting basically on a particular relationship or multiple relationships that you've had but with the two of cups and definitely the queen and the king of pentacles with this death card and this this growth that's happening on page of pentacles this is talking about a relationship we do have mercury in retrograde in libra i'm going to do another layer on this in cups seven of pentacles the tower so with this tower on the four of pentacles it's like making me think of some ground being broken up something groundbreaking uranus in taurus or literal ground being broken up um, but I think it's more about something groundbreaking within the personal psyche um, and we have the nine of cups with the two of pentacles this this previous past striving to um, do all the right things make the right decisions do things in a way that is going to bring in wish fulfillment and there is a level of success here with that then there's this point with, with this uranus energy where it's like wait a minute there's something that needs to be removed there's something that has to go there's something that is 
is blocking. So Uranus, it's telling me Uranus is going to help us find out what our um, stagnancies are and it'll be groundbreaking information. Um, we also have the Queen of Pentacles, as I said, and she is clarified by the, the Empress, so this Venus energy. Um, <clears throat> Venus in Scorpio, but also it is, it's, it's interesting because this Empress with the Queen of Pentacles, this is a very earthy kind of um, feminine Empress energy. And Venus is opposite Uranus. She's also trying Neptune and sextile Pluto. So there's something that's like really um, physical about this. <clears throat> I think that some people would even be having, based on this reading so far, some people will be having groundbreaking near-death experiences um, or things actually happening in their physical world that is just um, really eye-opening, changes their whole perspective. And this growth happens, Page of Pentacles, the devil clarifying that. So we have some something growing within the underworld, this subconscious garden, as I mentioned before. And... I was uh, in the car today and a song came on the radio, it was a classical one and I just caught the end of it and he said the name of it was The Garden of Persephone and that is Persephone and the myth of uh, Persephone came to my mind and the choice that we have, that we, we start to understand that we don't have to be raped into the underworld or dragged into the underworld by this Pluto energy, by this, and Pluto is in Capricorn. We have a choice of whether to live completely, totally in a conscious world with other people in a totally conscious world where everything that they digest as far as information is in a conscious collective. We can live in that world, we can stay in that world, we can, we can consume information um, in this you know, age of technology where everybody's just talking about everything that's on their conscious mind. Um, we also have a choice to go into this world underneath, the underworld, the garden of pure total transformation and go there willingly rather than being triggered by everything in the conscious world triggered by you have to do this and this is what's going on in the world this is my opinion and just you know I'll ram it down your throat and hopefully it will wake you the fuck up and then you will start to <clears throat> I don't know what, but that's that's basically what's going on, <laughs> which is not how most people, most empaths work. We don't want to be ramming information down another person's throat and um, don't have to be in that world. So we have the devil clarifying this page of pentacles and this is the growth of something within the subconscious, the psyche, the the um, underworld that is potentially overgrown um, with something else. So with, with um, Venus being this um, deep kind of gardener in this underworld, I feel like there's a potential to uncover something and it is in this realm of relationships. So the King of Swords is over the Two of Cups. The 
communication within relationships. God, this takes me back to a reading that I did. Um, I don't even know if it's still visible on my channel. I might have made it invisible. But I was talking about um, communication and the toxicity that was coming with communication. And um, now I'll have to go back and see if that's visible. If not, I will make it visible if anyone's interested in going back. It was a couple of years ago before I left San Diego, came back to Sydney. Um, I remember that reading. Um, so the King of Swords. This is an archetype of um, debate, conversation, the truth very analytical kind of um, unemotional um, archetype <clears throat> so this clarifying the two of, cup, uh, two of cups he may have even felt like you were being policed in a relationship um, because I wanted to say cops but anyway there's there's this energy of I'm right, you're wrong, my opinion matters more than yours, all this kind of toxicity in relationships, which not everybody has experienced. Um, it also could be like someone playing around with the truth, not revealing the whole truth. Like I said in the previous reading, wounds of deception. Um, I'll actually just pull a another card on that because <clears throat> I feel that that's an important message because in the ideal in a partnership you're supposed to be on the same page it's all um, truthful it's honest you're vulnerable um, yeah so we have the five of swords I feel like this is a lack of vulnerability or not or being too scared to to let the guard down because the five of swords is really about ego battles and when we're in an ego battle with someone and I've experienced this many times in relationships just as we all have where we learn the lesson that you can't win through the ego or or through the through the use of our mind without being vulnerable with another person and also it brings up this this energy of this uh, wound of deception being completely defeated I remember a time before I started this channel where I was completely in the five of swords energy <clears throat> um, five of swords three of swords you know ten of swords the betrayal um, defeat and it takes time to work through that and I don't even think that we fully work through it without going into what I'm talking about here which is this potential in the, in the subconscious for unearthing something letting something free <clears throat> and when I was going through that gut-wrenching time um, back 2015 or 16 and you know, realizing how much I'd sacrificed to be with that person as far as my time and, um, you know, other things. It took me a couple of years and I, and I surrounded myself with really nice things. Um, I threw myself into a new direction <clears throat> in my career, in my job, and I did enjoy those things, and I accomplished um, things that I wouldn't have done if I didn't have that fire within me to, to leave that situation behind, and so a lot of good came out of that pain, but at the same time, can I say that it's completely completely healed no I can't because every now and then I still think about that situation 
and and then the following situation after that as well <laughs> so you know we get into um, these relationships where people have their demons they have their issues their insecurities and it creates all these all this chain of events that we have to really um, deal with and you know the, the, the next situation relationship or person that came into my life after that after that horrible kind of ending and betrayal and you know there's so many things um, I was really really raw and um, quite guarded but yet I was I was surrounded with nice things and I was doing well with the things that um, I was achieving and was on a seemingly um, hopeful and successful track in life that's what it looked like from the outside but I hadn't dealt with the things on the inside and so this next person came along saw all this stuff you know um, saw that I was doing well and liked the way that I lived and um, f and created a perspective of me based on all of that um, and so you see what I'm saying here is that people see really the surface they see the surface unless they delve deeper into who you are and you know how much you show to them and how vulnerable you are so then we so we go through these situations where we get hurt we, we try to deal with it the best that we can by throwing ourselves into things surrounding ourselves with whatever going on a holiday vacation whatever it is that <clears throat> helps in the short term but then we've we've got these things that we basically still have to carry and so what I feel like this is saying is that this mercury retrograde is a an amazing opportunity to go back into some of these situations where there was a defeat and from that defeat we subconsciously created blockages and um, suffocated some kind of potential and this this goes back a long time these relationships only kind of reflect and our opportunities to to do this sort of work but I think that a lot of people are really limited in how to expand their mind into this sort of shadow work so it does kind of take half a lifetime to get to that point um, <clears throat> But this is what I'm seeing here. So this, this Mercury is in a challenging relationship energetically with Pluto in Capricorn. So externally we're seeing things of Capricorn world companies and things like that doing whatever they want to do and they are allowed to do what they want to do because they are entitled to do that. Um, and we are just living in that world if we're working for a company we're in their world whatever changes they make they it, that's their world and we choose to be in it or not be in it and so it is a very uh, similar kind of thing it's a parallel to um, these structures within ourselves so these systems and corporations and structures see opportunities to grow and um, sometimes the, the you know the people get in the way that's you know that's what I'm trying to say here is like the parallel is there's an opportunity there's a potential whether uh, you know you use it for good or evil is another story um, but there is a potential 
with this Pluto in Capricorn of change of a structure, a structural um, way that you do something, the system of how you think, the, the way that you get into relationships and the behaviours. Um, there's a potential to basically unlock a truer self. There's a potential to change something so that there's so that it's more expansive. So the next card we have is the Four of Swords with the Page of Cups. So this Four of Swords came up in the last reading, and this was a message of rest and you know um, letting yourself go into this dream world. Basically, what I was saying was sleep, respite, and um, recovery not really having to take much action because the action comes later because I have the death card with the king of wands king of wands is going to do something within the realm of um, rebirth so there's this daring rebirth I don't know if I mentioned it but I, I, I um, pulled a card earlier from the crystal mandala and it was daring rebirth with this ancestral light energy from the crystal tarot and this is like if you want to research something that's going to inspire you right now of doing this daring rebirth research something that um, happened in history where someone or a group of people um, decided to make a change they decided to change the way they did something or do something differently and this created um, a massive impact so <clears throat> that's what's coming within the world and within the individual before that we have this this mercury and retrograde um, <clears throat> with the page of cups page of cups is about receiving something receiving insight it's Pisces energy so we have Neptune in Pisces so we go into this realm and if we have the ability to interpret and remember, recall dreams and put them into a some sort of journal or, or if we have the ability to um, lucidly explore that world, there is a lot to receive is what it's saying. Because um, after that, um, we have the King of Wands, which I feel is Mars energy with the Death card. So I feel like this is where this breakthrough energy comes in of knowing what one wants to do or needs to do. Um, and I'm just going to clarify this Wheel of Fortune, Knight of Wands. So this is something changing, doing something differently that actually creates a momentum into a fiery um, direction or fiery kind of energy this is interesting because what it's making me think of is no matter what we're dealing with energies um, that are going to make people very either very reactive or it's inspire some kind of passion um, and I feel like with the Will of Fortune clarifying this, it is really up to how much has the individual received from a place of pure truth or how much have they received from a place of total confusion. There is this sacrifice again though that's showing up. So it may be that you have to sacrifice where you work or where you live. It might be a move or something like that. I'm going to pour a crystal mandala for that because it is the last card and the five of cups clarifying that king of pentacles is definitely something that is um, sacrificed within this realm of Capricorn something's changed and that's why I think it's difficult it's a difficult energy. So it's the card of 
Archangel Gabriel in turquoise. Safe to be seen. And that's interesting because it's like it's it's after a process of something like this and getting in the habit of doing things like this, um, people are just generally more um, naked, less fake. And this is happening in, on a parallel with the Capricorn Pluto energy. So I feel that we will be seeing um, things in more of a or more of a bare bones kind of way. Oh, so that's really what's behind that kind of policy with this company, and that's why they did that. Okay, okay. So that's why that person is like that. It's a bit like the Wizard of Oz kind of energy, and you get disappointed. Um, but let's see what this this says. Because it does say things will be seen within the King of Pentacles. Um, so that's a company or the energy of Earth. So it says that you have many loving words to share and a higher consciousness to be. In your own way, in your own world, in your own relationships, you are a light bearer and a bringer of truth. Although you have had past experiences where this was not always well received and sometimes resulted in abusive behavior towards you from those who were afraid of love. You have never closed off from your truth. You still know what you know. You may have become reluctant to share it so freely, but you cannot forget your inner wisdom. And this, I feel, is saying that that inner wisdom will be seen by others um, without you receiving any kind of abuse, bullying, or gaslighting. Um, but there's also this like feeling of loss that goes that comes with that. It says it is safe for you to be seen in this lifetime. You are meant to be a spiritual leader of sorts, to bring through the light, peace, love, and guidance that others around you need. Don't be afraid of their reactions. Some will love you, and others might not understand, or may resist, or even attack in fear, but in truth you cannot be harmed. And that makes me think of this Mercury with Spiker, and how protected um, Mercury is with that vibration, that, that frequency, with the thing that is going to change. And so as Mercury goes into this retrograde energy over like the next um, several weeks, <clears throat> it's like it's safe to, to venture into things where you were afraid to before. It's safe to share these experiences and you will know who to share them with. This person will not abuse you, whatever it is. If this could be the new company because it's right after the Knight of Wands. This is like some kind of move or um, change in circumstances after a period of rest and receiving insight. Then this new energy with this King of Pentacle com Pentacles comes in <clears throat> and they may have attached with them some kind of um, energy of loss. So that could be company, a company that is um, that needs you or someone who has experienced a lot of a lot of loss and it, and it is safe for you there with that connection um, what is this page of cups it more specifically receiving during the mercury retrograde the six of wands 
So on some kind of deep subconscious level, people have really needed to be acknowledged for who they really are. And what happens, I think, is subconsciously we have these blockages and then we create um, things that aren't necessarily true to who we are because we subconsciously crave that recognition. And I feel like what's going to be received is the reasons and the insight into what was um, something that was unrecognized um, either at an early age or in, in some kind of relationship or past life whenever and whatever that was so it goes back to something where it was about recognition <clears throat> Which is interesting because once that um, is received, this could also be about um, the, because it's a card of success, and I did mention in the beginning that there has been a level, level of success in gaining certain things. Um, this could be, you know, circumstantial and in the material world, but then there's a deeper success that is possible. And it's talking about this. So in this Mercury retrograde, we will be, um, we'll have the opportunity to uncover something groundbreaking to do with relationships and to do with a, to do with success of the individual or the need for recognition and what has been blocking the true self from really shining and wanting to be seen um, because if, if there ha if there subconsciously is a fear of not wanting to be seen for who you really are then what you might be projecting out into the world is not you and you may attract a certain energy that is um, basically um, suffocating and so what it's saying is that once these um, realizations come in and we know what to change so we have this Venus energy in Scorpio um, working with Uranus to harness some kind of new different way to be that is going to facilitate a, a more transparent and um, more naked version, so to speak, of yourself. And this, this is really, it's special, it's a special thing. It's, like I said, groundbreaking. And um, with Mercury in a trine at the moment with Jupiter, it's like this is how Mercury, messenger of the gods, is beginning his retrograde is by communicating, having energy um, exchanges with Pluto and Jupiter. Change, transformation, expansion. Those are some big intentions. Um, so that's why I think this this time period of the next several weeks could be really life-changing and um, I think a lot of changes in the world um, will upset people and create this reactive energy and in others it will just be inspiring because because not everything is a complete and total disaster it it's like a mirror and the more change and and as upsetting as it is when people die and things happen natural disasters it's also um it's it's a chaotic energy and chaos basically is the uh truth of of transformation Transformation cannot happen without chaos. 
So that is my reading for Mercury in retrograde. Um, it's something that would be continued next week. Uh, something I can look into as well. Hopefully by then I will have um, a space set up to, sh to be able to um, record things that I'm doing with my hands so you can see me working with the plants and the things that I want to show you. Um, until then, I hope that this has been interesting and that you're all doing well and I will see you next week. Thank you so much for being here.